Twitch to Christian, back with the video. Um, but before we get started, I'd just like to thank uh, for all you guys' support and give a special shout out to Javon who sent me a donation through PayPal. I really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everybody who has given their support to the Patreon, who's given their support to PayPal. And I'll be giving different shout outs. And I'll also be emailing and messaging those who have given, no matter how much they have given. And I really appreciate you guys' support. Uh, if you guys really like my videos, go to go to the Patreon. You can support at any different level. And also, too, as well, you can use the one-time donation through PayPal, which really helps me out. And I really appreciate it. Because uh, over, over the next couple days, you guys are going to really see some good videos. And, uh, and some of the things that I'm going to show you are going to be shocking especially where iraq is concerning their rate so it's going to be pretty interesting and as of course the future and of, and of course where iraq should be right now as far as their rate. all right so let's go ahead and get started um, i did the video uh that i posted a couple days ago about vietnam and their gold and as far as where they're at as far as gold and compared to with other nations now, one of the things that uh, when I was doing the research, um, after I made the video, I came across this one uh, dealing with Vietnam's oil production. Uh, one of the things that some of the, some of the biggest backers of an economy is its oil production. And one of the things that, that a lot of these countries are going to is gold. But oil is one of the big ones. And I had this article from 2018. I'm going to show you a couple different articles, starting with the... Well, the oldest one it says Vietnam's oil production to drop 10% annually, annually by 2025. It says here, depleting mature fields and lack of new exploration and investments will result in Vietnam's crude oil production declining 10% every year until 2025, the state-run Vietnam Oil and Gas Group, or Petro Vietnam, said on Wednesday. Earlier this year, Vietnam's government said it expected the country's oil production in 2018 to be declined by 14.7% compared to 2017 and to average around... 227,130 barrels. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm just going to point out some highlights. The rise in recoverable reserves has slowed to an alarming rate, affecting the sustainability of the development of Vietnam's oil and gas industry, Rudolph quoted. Insufficient funds have prevented Petro Vietnam for expanding exploration activities, the company noted. Another deterrent to more to more exploration offshore is the geopolitical hot potato the South China Sea where Vietnam and China and a bunch of other countries around the sea are disputing territories in the busy maritime traffic waterway parts of which are considered to contain a lot of oil and gas Vietnam suspended its March in March a drilling project in the South China Sea under pressure from China all right now one of the other uh, some of the other issues that China does de I mean not China uh, some of the issues that they deal with uh, Vietnam is that it's very expensive to purchase rights and everything to do exploration. And I'll show you guys here that in a minute. This comes out Jan July 20th, 2019. So this was a couple days ago. Declining investment limits Vietnam's oil and gas industry. Declining investment, dueling reserves, high taxes, and red tape are all combining to limit Vietnam's oil and gas industry. The industry used to receive around $2 billion from foreign investors each year, but this has come down now to only a few hundred million dollars. Chairman of the State and Oil Petro Vietnam said at a meeting, contributions to Vietnam's oil reserve have also been decreasing. When our predecessors extracted one ton of crude oil to use, they put another 1.5 or two times as much into reserves. Now we take out one ton... Now we take out one ton of crude oil, we add only another 0.3 or 0.4% into the reserves. Regulations make it costly to explore new sources of oil. For instance, Vietnam's law on water resources requires each exploration to pay 10 to 15 million in taxes, which is too high given the investment is so limited. It makes things easier for us oil prospectors, very difficult. It's like we are tying ourselves down. Without funds for oil and drilling exploration, there's no way to increase reserves. Despite changing conditions, the National Assembly has maintained its targets for the oil and gas industry, but it has not provided any legal or systematic solutions the sector needs. Vietnam's energy demand increases by an average of 10% a year. Oil and gas contributes 40% of the total primary energy supply and about 35% of the total final energy consumption. 
there's a lot of issues dealing with that, dealing with Vietnam and oil and gas. And that's one of the things that's going to be important in order to sustain a higher rate. Now, we discussed gold before, and they really don't hardly have any at all whatsoever, except for maybe the people of Vietnam itself. And one of the other issues that they are dealing with is China in, in the South Sea for oil exploration. So this is a big issue. Now, if, if Vietnam is going to be one of those countries that does change in value, some people have said 10 cents. I've seen people say 47 cents on the dollar. But if they are not, if they cannot get these, the oil and gas issue resolved and finding more oil and gas, then they're going to have some problems maintaining any rate change. So even if Vietnam does go through a rate change in the global reset, their future outlook doesn't look all that great. And like I told you before, um, you know, if I have, I am invested in the dong. I just think still the dinar is still the better investment. And I think we all were looking for different things to change or happen uh, over the years. And of course, we didn't realize all the pieces of the puzzle have to be put together. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention uh, as far as the future outlook. And I don't really know. And just the, some of the news that I've been reading about Vietnam and in their economy, their economy is booming. But at the same time, that doesn't mean anything if they're running out of oil and if they don't have that many reserves, which means they're going to have to be importing at some point if they don't get their if they don't get these issues resolved. I think eventually they will get these issues resolved with China. I think the whole thing with the trade deal, when the, everything goes through, uh, some of those issues will be resolved. So I think with any of the currencies that I have invested in, when the global reset takes place, then I will be exchanging those currencies probably right away. I haven't, you know, the only thing, no, nothing I have seen so far has convinced me that they're going to be any higher than maybe 10 cents on the dollar. So, and that's just from what I see. They might do 10 cents on the dollar in a global reset, and then their currency again might begin to fall, might begin to drop because they don't have all their ducks in a row. And we're we're getting closer and closer and closer to the reset, and things need to happen with v Vietnam for those who are invested. Like myself, I'm not too worried about it because I already know I'm already set up uh, with a dinar. So I'm not really too concerned about the, the little investment that I do have in the dong. So I hope this is, this, I've brought you some good information and that uh, before you make, before you make any more investment into the Vietnamese dong, that you consider some of the information that I've put out in the last two videos. Thank you guys for listening, and I will see you guys with some more videos. I got some really good videos coming out here in the next couple days, so you really need to pay attention. Thank you guys. Have a great day.